Hello, this is Walt Smith on Blooming Rising TV. Back for another week of Walter's Glass Half Full. Now, the summer, Negative Nelly's been posting some negative stuff about City this week. So, without further ado, let's have a look at some of those comments. The Red Army. I heard your Snake Sterling is going to Hollywood to do a sequel movie for Snakes on the Plane, which is called Snakes in the Football Club, where Samuel L. Jackson stars and your snake as the main snake. He is in the movie. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> I get the feeling that some journalists actually woke up on Friday morning and heard that Sterling had crashed, rubbed their hands with glee and wonder, what had Raheem done now? Raheem the Snake, you do know that Raheem Sterling was actually bought by Liverpool. He didn't grow up on the streets of Toxteth, actually honing his skills with jumpers for goalposts. Sterling as a youngster, well, he's from London, he played for QPR, and he made the brave decision to come up north to supply his trade. Now, the reason he actually came up to Liverpool was, well, the better than QPR. But City actually showed an interest. Well, Sterling must have made his mind up at the time that City were in a better position to further Sterling's career. Players are actually renowned for moving on to what they perceive to be better clubs. So, for example, when Barcelona knocked on Lionel Messi's South American front door, he actually packed bags and moved halfway around the world. Well, no one heaped snakes gone on Rooney when he actually decided for a world record transfer fee for a teenager to join Manchester United. Our dad in the wool, Evertonian, actually left his boyhood club to play his trade on a bigger stage. I think that all this bitterness in the press at the moment about Sterling, well, I'd like to hit it from a different angle. I feel it's easier for the Scouse Mafia, both fans and ex-players alike, to turn on Sterling than take a deeper look at their own club. It's a lot easier for them to actually rip apart a player who's seen another club that's more attractive, rather than take a closer look at what's going on inside Anfield. The owners, well, they don't spend very much and they're quite prepared to let go of their best players. I feel their owners have created some deep-rooted problems at Liverpool. Moneyball sounds like sheep in wolves clothing to me. Even the Telegraph this week, well, they made up some lies about Raheem Sterling's wages just to stir up some hate. I would boycott the Telegraph, but, well, I never bought it anyway. You know there's a witch hunt going on when a current Liverpool player and, well, the Manchester United captain are two lone voices in the media actually standing up for our boy. I think the troll of the week this week has got to go to Oakley, MUFC, the man who posts on here more than, well, most people. This video is hilarious. City don't have a youth academy. <laughs> Mate, we just snapped up one of the best prospects in world football, Vales Sarsfield's Benjamin Garay. This is a lad who has been trapped by some of the world's biggest football clubs, including Barcelona. The young footballer waxed lyrical about the setup at City, saying he was fulfilling a dream and going to one of the best academies in the world. Blues, this kind of talk, well, it brings a tear to my eye. Well, if you look at our academy, what's it actually done to earn such praise from a prestigious talent? Well, considering our academy is still in its infancy, pardon the pun, we're knocking it out of the park. Our under-11s, well, they won their league. Our under-13s, they won their league too. Our under-15s, guess what? They won their league. Our under-14s, well, they won the derby. 9-0. Our under-16s won their league without losing a game all year and scoring, wait for it, over 100 goals. Our under-18s, well, they were national champions and we actually got to the FA Cup Youth Final as well. The thing that gets to me is, some of these players, and indeed players that we're looking at, won't remember a time when City weren't a top club. We'll be at that point soon where youth players will only ever have known us as one of Europe's elite. City, well, they've invested major resources into the youth setup and it's bearing fruit now. The scouting and recruitment of top talent at every level. It's an exciting time to be a blue. The naysayers, well, they'll tell me. What's the point? They'll never play for the first team. I'll tell you the point. First, well, for the kids, it'll get them a first-rate footballing education, which they'll be able to carry through for the rest of their careers. Secondly, they'll get a first-rate academic education. Now that Manchester City have got strong links with St. Bede's College, in Manchester. Thirdly, with the arrival of Pep Guardiola, we know he likes to work with youth players at every single level, which can only be beneficial for everyone. Lastly, well, if they don't make the grade at City, well, we can sell them for a few quid and uh, get some buyback clauses in there or even indeed some sell-on clauses. Patrick Oakley, I'm not happy with Nolito. <laughs> There's a few things that strike me straight off the bat about this statement. Number one, well, we're getting this guy on the cheap. In a crazy world where Crystal Palace are spending more than £30 million on a player, we're getting a fully paid up member of the Spanish national squad, £16 million, quid, which to be fair, Shape Man Saw could probably find down the back of his couch. Also, well, this guy's worked with Pep Guardiola before. He knows him as a footballer and as a man. I trust Pep 
Pep trusts Nolito, therefore, I trust Nolito. I hear that Barcelona was sniffing round after Nolito, but he wanted to work with Pep. The Pep magical effect has already started. For £60 million, this guy's stats simply add up. He started 27 La Liga games last year, scored 12 goals, 7 assists, and was man of the match nine times. Nolito, well, he simply knows how to play the Pep language style of football, which can only be beneficial when training begins and Pep stamps his style of play on the team. Nolito, well, he scored 39 goals and 100 appearances for Celta Viga. We're not talking about a flash in the pan. I've heard fans from other clubs actually saying, well, he's over the hill, he's too old, he's 29. Craig Bellamy was 29 when we bought him and well, that turned out okay, didn't it? To be honest, Patrick, well, we bought a player that's 29 in his prime and uh, didn't cost us very much and Pep trusts him. What's not to like? Well, that about sums up another week of Walter's Glass Half Full. Now, if you've got any negative comments that you'd like me to respond to, what are you waiting for? Get tapping below. Oh, time for another.